So in this video, we're going to talk about interpolation. Uh, more specifically, we're going to uh, learn what is it and why it's useful. Uh, in later on videos, we're going to actually learn the basics of uh, performing polynomial interpolation on, on a set of data that is given to us. We're also going to learn how to do interpolation with splines, uh, interpolation with the method of Lagrange, and we're also going to look at the MATLAB implementation. So let's begin at the beginning and ask the question, what is interpolation? What are we talking about? And interpolation uh, really means making a guess uh, uh, to what the values of a function are, but uh, being mindful that we're only given uh, certain points, right? So in this case, we're given a measurement of the function at the coordinate zero, we're me given a measurement of the function at coordinate one, given the measurement of the function at coordinate 2, and so on. So if we then ask ourselves, what is the value of this function between, let's say, 0 and 1, we would be out of luck because we didn't measure. However, if we make some certain basic assumptions on the shape of the function, we can then produce a guess to what this, uh, this function will look like in between these points, and if we have a formula for it, we can then evaluate and produce this numerical guess. Right? So here you have, in fact, two guesses that are plot. One is a linear interpolation between points, and the other one is a cubic interpolation between these points. So you can see the shape of these functions between the points are very different from one another. The linear one essentially joins this uh, these points with a function that is a line, and the cubic one joins points uh, with a function that is more round or more smooth, right? So if I'm using, for example, um, um, my, my model, essentially my interpolation model, to evaluate uh, the function, what it would be between the values, let's say, 7 and 8, evaluate here. If I use the linear model or a line between the two points, I'll get this value. If I use the cubic one, I'll get this value. So the, the values would be different from each other, and that's important to keep in mind for later on. But let's uh, just discuss in a, uh, a little bit for why, why we're doing this. We're doing this because we're often limited in the number of measurements we can make or store in the computer, right? If we could measure, for example, we're going to talk about sound, measuring sound and storing sound in your computer so that it can be transmitted to you. For example, now you're listening to this video uh, the, 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 the pad that I'm using to, to record this is doing what we're going to talk about in a second, right? But it, we are not, this, this, this iPad is not measuring all possible, um, uh, 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 it's not measuring the air pressure wave at all possible times, but it's doing so at, at certain number of uh, time intervals. Nonetheless, if we measure enough and we produce a, a, a useful guess in between these points, we can actually hear a decent reproduction of my voice. Uh, and sometimes we may know enough from physics and from math to make a good guess, right? So, so let's talk about sound in, in a little bit of, of detail. Like when you're hearing sound, what, what is happening? There is some, uh, some air pressure waves that are reaching your ear and they're vibrating your eardrum, which is uh, causing uh, your auditory nerves to be stimulated and electric signal is going from your auditory nerves all the way to your brain, which is then interpreting the sound, right? So what are these air pressure waves? Um, basically, these, are, these reflect uh, periodic different concentrations of air molecules through space. So in this case here, we have our x coordinate, which is uh, a spatial coordinate. If we plot the pressure as a function of x of space, we can see that the pressure follows this sinusoidal wave. Um, and this comes from a derivation of, of, of a known famous PDE called the wave equation, which is something we'll cover later on in this course. But for now, we just take, take our word for it that this, this pressure wave is, is a sinusoidal wave that can, can be used and interpreted 
um, and, and used to understand how sounds um, are propagated. And a few basic notes, right? So the amplitude of the wave, meaning the bigger the pressure differences uh, between the, the, the lowest pressure uh, and the highest pressure, so essentially this amplitude is telling you how loud the sound is, right? If it's a small amplitude, the sound is, is dim. If it's a bigger amplitude, the sound is louder. The frequency of the wave tells you essentially the pitch. Right? Low pitch sounds have a, a, a slow frequency, a low frequency, and higher pitch sounds have a high frequency. So what goes on when, when you're listening to me through this talk, right? So basically I'm speaking and my vocal cords are generating a sound wave which is then reaching the microphone of this iPad. And this microphone, one of the functions, it's, it's a digital microphone. It converts sound pressure waves to numbers and through what's called an analog to digital converter. Right, so essentially we have a, an anal analog signal, which is modeled by a continuous function, one of these sinusoids that we just talked about. So this is a continuous equation. It's written for all possible times. And we then, this analog to digital to convert doesn't keep all of the possible values of this, of this wave, since it's not possible to keep an infinite numbers, uh, an infinite amount of numbers. Rather, it keeps the, the wave at certain specific points, right? And these points here are given by these bars. So these, uh, these particular points are stored in, in essentially binary numbers in your computer, and we only have a finite uh, amount of memory in any digital computer, so we can't store all the points. But it is possible to go from this discrete set of points back to an analog signal or a continuous function. And this is done through something like interpolation. And this is the method that we're going to cover in the next few videos. Right. One application of, of, this, um, of this analog to digital to back to analog uh, conversion is in uh, cochlear implants, right? So if you look at one of the systems, the typical steps are here. It includes a microphone, right? Which again, we just talked about. And a processor that may filter out some sounds and may enhance some other sounds. Or, and this is usually done based on frequencies. It, frequencies. it filters certain frequencies and enhances other ones. Uh, this, this digital signal then is uh, transmitted to the headpiece, which then transmits this wirelessly through the, through, through the implant, which then uses the signals to stimulate your nerve. Right? And this is again where, where the digit to analog uh, piece is converted back uh, to, to analog. The this, this stimulation is, is in continuous uh, domain. And you have then your nerves tr uh, transmits uh, the this, this signals to your, uh, to your brain to correctly interpret the sounds. So this is one application. There are many other applications, for example, uh, if you listen to sound uh, files in your computer, typically an MP3 format or something like that, again, you have to convert it first from the continuous wave to the digital format, which is stored in your computer. And then if you want to play the sound back, you have to uh, interpolate it and produce, uh, you know, your loudspeaker has to produce this, this wave back to your ears, right? So, and similar statements can be made with respect to compressing and storing image data as well. There are too many pixels to store the entire movie that you would like to see. Rather, we, we store only a few of them and we interpolate in between when we want to produce the movie back to you. So there are many applications of this interpolation uh, technique and, and we're just talking about um, um, uh, one here. So coming up in this videos, we're going to talk about, uh, again, method for using polynomials to produce this interpolation function. We're going to use the uh, method of Lagrange interpolation, spline interpolation, and we're also going to cover how to program this in MATLAB.